and both teams have been posted with their gears and we'll get into the action momentarily. Wait to get into the game here. All right, let's get started. So, Canute will be on the blue side here because they invited. But this game number one, we're gonna take a look at both teams. So, Canute, see, we do see. Um, I don't know. I guess you can kind of call this the sort of the signature of that sort of bots united cuddly clown style teams with uh, a bunch of wins combined with a turbo user and then uh, some more speed control quicksand from bulky flood from ociara a couple interesting gems you don't normally see run too often on the bot teams we see a bola rend and scarable those kind of add a bit of own flavor here on dino dudes team we see oh well you know if you're gonna try to beat the bots maybe brocklim is the tem you you ought to bring as so that makes an appearance here. Other than that, we do see triple electric, triple melee coming out. And cool thing about Dino Dude's team, you'll notice all of the typings uh, flow into one another. The Toxic from the Platypus. The Platypus connects to the Garander. The Garander connects to the Minnow. And it goes so on and so forth all the way down. We see the uh, Tirok come out. And right away, Dino Dude going to... Tatsu plus Garander. It's kind of an interesting opener. Into the Turok. The Turok, of course, threatening Garander, but the Tatsu threatening it right back. Kadood maybe deciding whether or not to go for the Volfi here. Covering the OCR here. This would be an interesting play uh, from Canoot for sure. No, we see oh, maybe Amph instead. Yeah, it's going to be Amph instead coming in. A lot of speed control options from the bots team here. Wolfie, Mushuk, OCR, and Amphator all have really good speed control options. Dino Dude likely trying to out bulk that speed control. A lot of these Thames like Turok and Bracolum, Garander, they don't roll there. They don't really care about being slow. So hopefully that's the plan from East Coast Esports 2. Second bad's coming out now. Both teams running very low in reserve time early on in the finals here. We see Mashuk getting taken out. And then Golzi taken as well. Of course, a very strong Golzi game with Lots of electric weeks remaining in the back here. Bolaren gets picked up. Right off the bat, we see Dino Dude immediately going back for Platymus and Brocolum. And on the other side, Canude going to go ahead and drop down the token, and then there'll be one Tem left here to sort of check the Rolder or Turok, whatever is left over. I would imagine... Given the triple win, that thick skin roller could be the call here, and we will see it come out. And here we go. We're going to get into game one of our finals East Coast Esports 2 versus Bots United. And here we go. So, right away, some gears getting revealed. Of course, all the gears are known the Turok is bait, uh, and the Amph is handcuffs. Oh! We've got a, a subscription from Monster Bear. Thank you, thank you. We get back into the game here. Tatsu, the team, both teams will know that Tatsu is Doppelganger Brooch. So, obviously, the, the Doppel Wrenching Massage with the synergy from the Garander does pose some threat into Turok. Maybe wondering if the plan is to 
try and slow down the Tatsu with Tesla Prison while swapping in something that can take this, perhaps. But otherwise, it's it's not a fantastic trade for the uh, bot. So let's see what they decide to do here. Both teams. We have action coming in. It's going to be Tesla Prison that does target Tatsu. Yeah, immediately dropping it low. Lower, at the very least. Garander going to go ahead and throw the Waste Water into the Turok. That is going to proc that uh, bait. The Stone Ball slams into the Garander, dealing effective damage. On the other side, we see the Synergy Wrenching Massage into the Turok. With that Doppelbruge, it adds on the damage, and Turok is down. Immediately taken full to zero there by the Wrenching Massage. So, early quick strike for East Coast Esports 2 is you see Doppelganger Brooch Wrenching Massage. Uh, why is Doppelbruch not revealed? An excellent question, uh, Boldy. Of course... The bots would know uh, of its existence because this is an open gear uh, tournament. So they knew, they decided to take this trade. They knew what was coming for him. And with the Diabolo active, there's immediate pressure on Canute to deal with this Garand or get it off the board. Of course, that's going to be easier said than done. As even going for a Volfi here could open them up to another hefty strike from a wrenching massage. And the Garander looking quite nice into Bolaren, Tolkien, and Fader. But perhaps uh, it doesn't have quite enough HP left to sort of get the job done. With Turok out of the game. And Volpi in. We're going to see kind of what the Tamers go for here. We could see a double into Tatsu maybe uh, to score a KO. But uh, perhaps maybe just trying to guarantee uh, a KO here onto the Garander is leaving this thing alive with the refreshing Diabolo. Maybe not the best idea. But perhaps Dino Dude could play off of that uh, in immediate uh, interesting state. So the, the bots are behind a 10, but they do have speed control. They have a huge speed advantage. The question is, will they be able to bring down Garander here? Actually, Volpi is just going to go ahead and swap out. It's not interested in hitting the board just yet. Volarend coming in. And Garander going out the other way, so a swap predicted. Yes, Voldorand, a fitting partner to go up against Brocolum here. Amph going for another Tesla Prison into Tatsu. This will deal reduced damage because of that tag team. Tatsu goes back for Wrenching Massage. Volfi gets out of the way of that one. But Voldorand, oh, it takes 35%. Definitely not an ignorable amount of damage there. But a uh, good heads-up swap from Canude getting the... Volderend in, in front of the Brocolum, which it can now look to continue on the pressure and start building some damage or um, special defense. Volderend, a pretty solid answer into both Brocolum and Platymus with its scaling special defense. On the other side of things, Canute can continue to influence speed control. Yes, we see the Tesla Prison again. So Tatsu will drop down to minus 3 speed now, but it doesn't quite go down. Virulent Gust coming out of the Volarend. Going to go ahead and take out the Tatsu. As we see, it's an aerobic Volarend. Not lowering its own speed. Pretty smart. But it will, of course, take solid chip from the Broccolum. It does beg the question, how precisely does Canute intend to handle the Garander, which can come in now? Yeah, Dino Dude will immediately drop the Garander onto the board. Now, this thing does have an electric move active, but it has perfect coverage for it, really. The melee soul shout available for the Broccolum. So, Canute needing to deal with this Garander, but not really having the means to do so. As early on, Dino Dude's sort of bulky offense has. Secured a KO, and now a favorable board position after the response. HP's looking about the same, but no longer any speed control from the bots. Uh, 
I wonder if we could see an HKS here. Hyperkinetic Strike is not working properly currently. No, we will see the swap out. Boulderend is going to leave. Tolkien is going to come in. This is looking like a nice Heater Mom's Lunch turn. Trying to play into the stamina on these Thames. McCollum gets the chip on the marbles. The Bright Beam is going to come in. That's going to hit both slots here. And the reduction in damage being exactly what's needed is... Yeah, we will see Defibrillate strike true. And the Soul Shout from the Broccolim through the burn. Not dealing nearly as much damage. Of course, this does still beg the question, how precisely do the bots intend to deal with this Garander? The Absol from Tolkien may not be enough. And now Tolkien, one of the primary ways to check Broccolim, and also a pretty decent time at dealing with Platypus with a Tornado, of course, is now out of the game. But the bots are isolating the Platymus here in the draft a little bit, focusing on the Thames that would be advantageous to take care of as Garander starts to drop low enough that it won't be able to deal with Bolarend and Amph in the late game. Sort of relying on Dino Dude playing this Rolder and uh, Platymus. These two Thames that have a pretty tough matchup in Devolfi, Amph, and Vola in the late game. On the other hand, we see through the Mom's Lunch and the second Soul Shout, Dino Dude's Brocolum. This thing has stamina for days, as we see Garander's actually going to leave, and Platymus is going to come in. It's a double swap, Brocolum also leaving, and Dino Dude planting those two Thames that have that late game disadvantage onto the board. Fiery Soul aims for the Rolder. On the other side, Canute simply opts to rest Amp. Bit of an interesting choice. So we'll check on our reserve time here. See if they did go to timer or not. Because that Amp was also almost full stamina. Platymus is in. So that means that... Aquatic Whirlwind is up. Perhaps no better time to let it loose, either. We'll see if they opt for the more conservative approach here. Amp will go for Plague. That hits Roller pretty hard, but... You will see immediately the Reactive Vile kick in, restoring a little bit of health to the Roller. Aquatic Whirlwind tags the Tolkien, down it goes. On the other side, Roller goes for the Drill Impact, not opting to Stoneball in case there was a swap. And that deals pretty good damage to Amp. Damage that will no doubt be restored... When Amp uh, is able to recover. We will see Volorend come in now. Again, this is aerobic Volorend, so it not being able to scale its special defense means that uh, its wind attacks are looking pretty juicy into the Platymus. But it has to be careful that it doesn't, you know, trigger up uh, its own special defense getting dropped, and it also has to be careful that it does something about this uh is Rolder here as we see Tornado come out. Oh, big damage into the Platymus. You could see that combined. We see Aerobic Trigger. And Amp goes for the Tesla Prison. Yeah, it's going to go ahead and just take Platymus down here. And we'll do so. So, big damage coming in there. On the other side, Rolder goes for the Drill Impact once more. That's going to hit the Volarens. Not enough to bring it down. And short of a rush or anything like that, this Volarend will get to attack again. Garender comes in, but now it's a bit of a difficult situation for Canood, as he's going to have to figure out a way to get through this Rolder and the Garender without losing the Volarend. Because if the Volarend drops, if the Volarend is not able to continue here it suddenly becomes very difficult for Canood to deal with the Broccolim. Volfi coming in, wanting to save that fast toxic attack for the Garander. And an Intimidation immediately coming out to play with the Stamina again. Amp gaining some evasion. Garander breaks it with Wastewater. Back the other way. 
Team Elusive dodging the Bestial Charge. Rolder, still not quite overexerted yet, but standing in front of two attacks that can bring it down. Double Plague would definitely be a very big hit here, but Canute can just go back to the Bright Beam if need be, so creating a bit of a mix-up here. Threatening to heal some of that HP back. If Garander and Rolder come out, uh, it's unlikely that Bracolum's going to be able to contend with Amph in the late game here. It just doesn't deal enough damage. And now Volfi on board. You would think that means that Bracolum is meant to leave here, but the mix-up, going for a double plague into Rolder, uh, could create a untenable situation for East Coast 2. Boulderen just barely hanging on. It looks like the HP advantage and that crucial speed advantage means that East Coast have to make a very important decision here. Will they leave Garander in or take it out? They stay in, the Sludge Gift comes into the Garander. Down it goes. On the other side, Bright Beam comes out from Amph. Rolder goes for the Held Anger, and it hits the Evasion. The double was into Amp, but it wasn't enough. The read was that they were going to target the Rolder, but it was incorrect. Bracolum comes in. However, we see that there's no stamina left on Rolder, and Canute is pulling away here. The Bracolum is a problem, but I do not think Bracolum is able to beat the Amp Fader in the late game. We see Plague come out from Volfi. Rolder drops low, but not not quite low enough to get taken down. Bracolum fires back with a big inner spirit. This is going to deal massive damage to the Volfi, but again, just not enough to take it down. And that means that another attack from Amph or Volfi means that there's a huge hill for this Bracolum to climb. Volfi throws the plague into Bracolum. That's going to be enough to lower it down. We will see another Intimidation coming out from Amp. That's going to keep working the stamina on the Brock. Brock will use that stamina. We do see it is quite a lot of stamina on this Broccolum. Soul Shout, Inner Spirit, all that eating into the stamina, but not enough to take it down. Boulderen's going to come in here. So the Virulent Gust will be able to connect and put the bots at a pretty sizable HP advantage going into the final leg of this fight. Of course, Amp can't really damage Broccolum. Yeah, solid damage there. And Broccolum goes for the Soul Shout, and it does not overexert to do so, so no additional chip. But now both Thames will rest up quite a bit. But it should not be enough for the Broccolum. Let's see. Amp rests. So does Brock. There are 11 turns left in the game. Uh, no, 12 turns left in the game, I believe. Amp goes for Intimidation. Broccolim simply rests up. Amp cycles into Bright Beam. The Bright Beam, of course, does not very much damage at all. Broccolim simply rests again. Amp Sweatband works here. No timer showing up here on the Waiting for Tamers. That's weird. I'm gonna rejoin real quick. Oh. The game is... crashed? Or this is typing.
Okay, the game has crashed. Let's go back into Temtem. Oh, thanks for the 14 months, by the way, Bear. That's pretty long. Thank you very much. Hope you have a having a good one. It's the old spectate bug? I don't think so. No, as we see, it's out. Uh, what happened was Dino Dude. Oh, I got kicked out of the game. Dino Dude is still in game though. Okay, so we see Amp has the evasion up. Dino Dude is on minus one speed on the Brock, so probably get hit by a Tesla prison or something like that. Amp press, Broccolum rests. Rested's gonna restore H. Relax will restore HP here. It's turn 22. Dino Dude has to make up so much uh, HP here. Yeah, smart play by the bots to play for the uh, to play for the end game with Amp. That was uh, well played by them, I think. You could see the the targeting from East Coast Esports too in the end game. Um, just not correct. Like so many times where the Amp was targeted and they got all of that HP back. Uh, if East Coast was able to, to do it again, maybe they'd you know target the other slot a little more often instead of going for the Amp there. But who's to say? Canood with the victory. Dino Dude is eliminated. Oh, and let's update our text. Whoops, wrong one. Where is it? Right here. Nope. There. Bots United take a one nothing lead in the series. Alright, let's get our next matchup going. We've got Bella going up against Invincible. Oh, Bella playing the uh, sleep combo team. That should be interesting. Going up against Invincible playing... Uh, usual invincible sort of stuff. We do see, yeah, it looks like uh, what is probably a fast charge Gazuma on the Invincible's team. With a double digital. I like the Gazuma 2 wire. It's kind of an interesting little combo there. We see lots of stuff that can help the uh, uh, that sort of game coming out from the 2 wire. We've got two Toxics for Faraday Cage, uh, the Crystal for Humiliating Slap. Double Turbo, and of course the 
hedge in to benefit from fast charge as well. So lots of ways for Invincible's team to increase his own speed. That can definitely be problematic for Bella, whose team is also sort of trying to get the upper hand in terms of speed. We see Platymus is banned out. This could be simply a moment to try and give the triple earths on the team a little bit more room. There are four water weaknesses on the five water weaknesses on the team. So water being banned out and in soul supply here. Very nice for Bella. Hedgen's about to go nuts too. Yeah. Uh kind of Hedgen goes last on any turn with Naga on the board, right? And Naga is not banned, as we can see. So that's a little concerning, I would imagine. But with teams like this, who knows if, like, the Lawaddle, for example, even has an attacking move. It's not like Waspine and Lawaddle are going to be hitting the Hedgen back that hard, so... Yeah, I mean, I'm maybe inclined to agree with Welsh that this looks like a very good game for Invincible's Hedgen. Especially if he's got, like, any sort of defensive capabilities on it. Like, if it's got any sort of bulk, it could be nice. We see the Grumpy immediately come out from Bella. Bella is on Broccolum. I wonder if they, they, you know, I wonder if East Coast 2 literally sat down and said, let's just bring four Broccolums to the bots. It didn't work out for Dino, dude. But let's see if it works out for everybody else. Bella, of course, uh, normally a VGC player. Looks like she maybe, you know, favored some combo teams. This was a Little Cup player, I believe, originally. Ball P2 wire. Be thrown out. This would be very interesting if it was Splitter. I assume it's not. Common factor with a Handcuffs Ball P. I assume it is Handcuffs Ball P. Once again, let's see. Invincible. Yes, it's Handcuffs Ball P. So. Where can you get a list of the team's members? Uh, I think they are in the Discord. And we'll see Naga come out. This is going to invert the priority here. But uh, the roster for East Coast Esports 2 is Sarbamba, Lulu Tror, VGC Bella, Dino Dude, Pat Farm, and me. And I'm casting, so I'm obviously not playing. Uh, and then the Bots United roster is, I believe, Canood. Invincible, Argon, Kunders, Talon, and I don't know if there's a sixth player or not. I can't remember. Oh, Sock. Sock is the sixth player, I believe. Bella with the ban on Hedge in second phase. I'm curious that Invincible chose not to go hedge in uh, early in the draft, or maybe scared away by the Grumpy? I suppose Grumpy Naga makes it so that Hedgen has to swap out turn one. Chimurian coming in from the back instead? I'm very curious what the uh, decisions will be here from Bella turn one. Oftentimes when you see Grumper picked up alongside a... Uh, when you see Grumper picked up alongside a Mental, you're thinking, and this sort of combo team that's slow down is probably going to be uh, picked up pretty commonly. See the Waddle picked up in the back. There's still like a Hedgen available, but this is more about like a this is more of like a speed control sort of combo oriented group, right? So uh, lots of sleep on Bella's team. And if we look over at Invincible, we can see that there is the Chim with Bait. But that's it in terms of anti-sleep, really. Not even a lunch on the Tolkien to clear 
sleep. So sleep will definitely stick to Invincible's team if Bella can land it, but that's going to be easier said than done. So the Naga is double screen, and the Volpe is handcuffs, war drum on the uh, two wire here. The lunch is interesting. It actually applied before common factor, so that would indicate that Grumper is actually faster than two wire. Which is, of course, bad news for that two wire getting off an attack this turn. We can see the handcuffs come down to trap the Grumper in for a future turn, however. See what the tamers go for here. The digital attacking two wire seems to represent a big dangerous threat. Definitely a dangerous threat to um, Invincible's team here. Or sorry, to Bella's team here. As uh, Broccolin, Lawaddle, Waspine, and Naga all take 2x from it. Of course, Lawaddle takes 4x. We will see Invincible retreat Balfi instead right away. Chimurian coming in. This is potentially trying to eat a slowdown here. And Naga going to go ahead and go for Beta Burst. It just kind of chipped the Chimurian down a little bit. Grumper does go for the slowdown, and it does target the Chim. So we will see Chim lose a bit of speed there. Dwyer gets the Faraday Cage, and that's going to stop Grumper from being able to use Synergy Slowdown next turn. Which does put... Both players in a bit of a difficult position. Chimurian does have the high priority move available now. Frond Whip can put a lot of pressure into Bella's Naga here. But Invincible is also kind of pressured to get rid of the uh, the Volfi here. Or sorry, get rid of the two wire as it is threatened with four times damage. Not to mention we could see a pretty powerful Naga's theory coming out, but the Chim can likely outspeed it with Frond Whip, even at minus one on the speed here. Both Chems are actually very threatened. Grumper could also go down to the big damage potential here. Bella's going to swap out Grumper. Lawaddle coming in on this side. Chimurian. Oh, the Frond Whip does target the Grumper, so... One step ahead there. And the Synergy Fury is going to be coming out on the other side from the Naga. Oh, the two-wire takes damage but does not go down. Naga overexerts itself. If this turbo attack lands into the Lawaddle, no, it's Naga. So Bella will not quite lose the Nagais. That's not great news for Bella. Potentially here is the Lawaddle doesn't really have much to do with the Deceit Aura. No low prio moves to speak of. More of a speed control 10 in and of its own. Chimurian, however, is not able to make a move here. Uh, not fast enough. It's using its base speed, which is lowered by 1. It can't use any prio moves because of DA. Same with 2 wire. There are no low prior moves available there. Curious to see if Bella's able to get something more here. She's running out of mentals. She kind of needs the mental synergy for Crystal Deluge and Slowdown to work properly here, but we see that she's kind of given up those mentals fairly early on in terms of damage. We will see Broccolum come in here now on this slot. Invincible actually leaves on two wire expecting to get out sped. It's Gazuma coming in instead. Luato gets the telekinetic shrapnel into the Gazu, but it's not at all phased. And Shimurian all too happy to go ahead and take the KO available to it. Luato will go down as Gazu squares up on the board with a Shimurian. Broccolin looking pretty good here, but the Tolkien sort of looms large over this game in the background. 
as Bella really not able to develop the holds needed for the combo team. Grumper are going to be the Tem coming in here. We see the Mom's Lunch activated again. Gazma with a di refreshing Diabolo proc. Or no, just simply the Diabolo revealed. And uh, it knows sort of dangers it can kind of put in here. That minus one speed on Chim is going to be a bit relevant here, as Broccolim could outspeed it if it's speed invested. You would think that it is speed invested on this team, as almost everything on Bella's team is speed invested. There isn't a good swap in for the melee attack, but Invincible will still leave on Chimurian. Brings two wire in. This is nice. If Bella strays from the targeting here. See the fast hard, the dust vortex comes out, and that is gonna tag the two wire. On the other side, we see Hurricane come out. Tried to get that synergy hurricane in play. Won't work. And Broccolim follows up with the Soul Shout. Skazma. Trapped in by the handcuffs. Kind of an interesting tech there. I, the bots, I guess, would have seen that coming. Um, the common factor, not really a factor here. It did stop the Hurricane from being resisted by Grumper. But with common factor no longer in the game, Invincible going for Volfi, trying to get the Grumper out of the game. If Grumper is removed, of course, it does really open things up for Tolkien to sort of sweep the game from here. Bella likely knows that, though, so I would not be surprised to see the Grumper leave the match. But again, uh, East Coast Esports 2 just asking so much from their Broccolims here. And we saw the amount of stamina required for that Soul Shout. Bella does not have as long-lasting a Broccolim. So Grumper is going to leave the game. It will be Waspine coming in. There's the Plague that will trap in the Waspine. Gazuma goes for the Turbo Choreography. This is nice to get the Dust Vortex faster than the opponent. Broccolem goes back for the Inner Spirit. And this is going to rock the Volfi again. Big damage. Oh, Invincible almost taken down by the Broccolim from Bella there. But again, it just manages to survive. We see the Royal Jelly from Waspine definitely playing a factor here. The Diabolo proc means that Volfi will get some health back, but that may not be the most consequential. As uh, a well-timed Soul Shout from Broccolim should be enough to bury the Volfi, and it should be enough to do it through Burn. So Invincible maybe having to switch gears a little bit here on the plan to try and get maybe the Broccolim trapped in for the token? It's hard to say. Lost Mean goes for the Hologram. Does that manage to dodge something? It dodges the Tesla Prison, but it will still take the Dust Vortex. Nice play around there by Invincible. Big damage into the Lost Mean. On the other side, we see Soul Shout comes from Broccolim. And Volfi is taken down. Tolkien looms large in the back here with Broccolim overexerted. Waspine with the Royal Jelly. We saw that Hologram outsped the Gazu. Well, which Tem will it be coming in now? Bella wants to prioritize saving the Brock here to give it an answer into Chimurian. And Invincible decides now is the time. Tolkien will hit the board. It's going to get some Marvel's chip value here and, of course, put Heater up on every Tem in the game. Bad Burner on the Waspine. But it doesn't have... It does not have an option. No hologram this time. Bella will leave. This is likely the Deluge turn. Naga hits the board. Marble's chip there. Gazu goes first with a tornado. Waspine just taken down. 
big overexertion there from the Gazu. Tolkien goes for the Fiery Soul, and Naga will hit the deck. With the Chim in the back. Grumper Broccolum coming in here. We see the Mom's Lunch active. That is probably going to affect the Broccolim more than the Tolkien here. Nice Marbles Chip. Means that if this Broccolim... Oh, it's so low stamina. Attacking on it is going to prove very costly. They may have to rest. But that's going to give Invincible the option that he needs. Tough circumstances here for Bella in the end game. Tolkien. Burned so much stamina to use Fiery Soul there. Grumper goes for Petrify! The trap and rest. Broccolum rests. 22.1%. Is it tanky enough to live a tornado from the Gazu? Probably not. It can't swap out, but this might not be enough. What a play from Bella. Petrify, giving it an opportunity here. Can Broccolin lift Tornado? No, it cannot. It goes down. Gazu also bites the dust here. Grumper goes for the Tesla Prison, but that is not going to be good enough for East Coast. Does Chimurian have Frond Whip? Yes, it does have Frond Whip because it used Crystal Plume Gatling, of course, to take it out. So Grumper can score a KO here, perhaps with Sludge Gift, if it has it available. But we didn't see any of Bella's game plan really develop here. Yeah, the burn is perfect. It's going to make it so the Grumper absolutely cannot KO the Chim with Dust Vortex. The DV comes out, the burn, it does almost no damage. And that's going to be absolute curtains for Bella. As Frond Whip takes it out. And the bots jump out to a 2-0 lead. Great play from Invincible there. As again, you saw Bella really kind of struggled to develop that sleep, speed control game plan just a little bit too slow than Invincible at every turn. And that means that we're looking at 2 to nothing. Can the bots get a 4-0 sweep in the finals? It would be the second League 4-0 sweep in the top division finals. Invincible staying in for the next round. He's going to go up against the captain of East Coast Esports 2, Lulu Tror. Makes his way to the stage. I hope you have a good one too. Basic LSD. Lulu Tror. Bit of a different looking team as well, going up against Invincible.
for that thing to go in here. Lulu going to be inviting. Here we go. All right, we take a look at Lulu's team. We see the triple monotype, Capire, and Karin being brought to this league, which is nice. Okay, the gods we banned out, and on the other side we will see Chim taken out, and Goldie immediately slapped down by Lulu. Counteracting that, Invincible comes right back with Meshook 2-Wire. Just a very standard hit him hard, knock him down setup. Kinu going to be second. Lulutrar uh, going for an interesting little strat here. Going to go ahead and drop uh, what is probably a protector buff onto Golzi and just play it out from there into Invincible. Karn banned out second phase. Second man coming out, it's going to be the Hedgen. So only the two wire to receive the fast charge bonus there. So it's going to be Gazi Platymus coming out the back here. Water Custodian Naga, that's possible. Interesting we see another Naga. Lots going deep into reserve time here. Capire Naga picked up. I wonder what... Does Capire even have a low prior move? I don't think it does. Let's go. Game number three. East Coast Esports 2 desperately needing to get back into the game here. Down 2-0. So it is Protector, we do see the Golzi moving to plus one, plus one, and it immediately goes for a show-off here. 
Beta Burst coming back, so we see the outspeed from both. Kinu, uh, a little bit of damage into Mashuk. Mashuk, ops with the perfect jab, so the speed not staggered in a way that Invincible would maybe like. The Synergy Faraday Cage is going into the Kinu, but it's not enough to bring it down. Oh, but it, no, not even through the ticks, so some prio moves will be necessary here. But Invincible has got to get out of here on 2-wire. He's completely threatened out by a show-off. Wow, show-off Synergy Hasty Lunch. No, it's no longer Synergy because of the Faraday Cage. Heads up play there from Invincible targeting the Kinu. Although, it could have worked either way. The Isolated status is going to stop Golzi from not consuming his gear here. So, uh, Two-Wire doing some pretty strong damage to East Coast 2 thus far this series. It's probably going to have to leave now. As Lulu does kind of have Invincible on lockdown here. We saw the Kinu is faster than the Mashuk, and there are no prior moves on Mashuk, so definitely looks like a situation where the two-wire could go down. Two-wire is going to leave. Tolkien hitting the board. I like this from Invincible. The heater is actually enough to push the Kinu over the line. Oh, but it doesn't turn off the synergy, so Golzi doesn't consume his gear. Kinu does go for Hypnosis, but the Heater, smart play from Invincible. The Heater is just going to push off the Sleep when it triggers, so one turn dodged. Golzi does manage to retain... Yeah, Golzi does manage to retain its uh, Adrenaline Shot, not consumed. So a bit of a, a back and forth trade there. Between Invincible and Lulu. The common factor can now be reused by Invincible to create more of an advantage state. Naga might hit the board here, but we're going to have to see. East Coast 2 going pretty deep into the reserves here. As Invincible now has burn to influence the situation. Depending on what Tem Lulu Shore goes for here. If Lulu wants to KO them a Shook, which does seem more on the bulky side, it's going to be Catwire coming in. That's an interesting pickup. Uh, it does mean that Lulu can go for that quick setup of uh, heat up if he wants. But there is still that Platymus sort of lurking in the back here. Will he simply go for the double into the Mashuk here? Last Rush is active, because there is one less time available. Tricky spot for uh, both players here. If the Golzi is faster than the Capire, Tolkien leaves. Gazma coming in this side. Golzi, Hasty Lunge is just going to tag the Gazu instead. Seizes the Diabolo. Catfire goes for Heat Up. Invincible is almost certainly going to collect Turbo Choreography on this turn. Yes, we will see it. And now the speeds shift. Golzi's Adrenaline Shot will trigger, but now Lulu doesn't have that much stamina going for it. The Gazuma does create threat. Platymus is there to sort of check Capire in the endgame here. HP's dropping, and Capire is sort of bulked up here, but it's maybe not quite enough. A 
Will Lulu opt to maybe save the Golzi? To try and get synergy on that Quetzalinho. Maybe to try and outspeed the two prior from the Mushuk. Capire is a very fast Tem. If Lulu does have speed investment, Invincible clearly doesn't have that, at least not that much speed on the Mushuk. But then, is it bulky enough to withstand the attack and turn on that first aid kit? Nice turbo play there from Invincible. Really can kind of change the complexion of this game. Lulu will make the swap. It's move flank coming in. This is to turn on the Quetzalinho synergy. He doesn't get ahead of Tornado. Capire takes a ton of damage there. Does it get ahead of Mushuk? Yes, he does. Can the Quetzal bring down the Shook? No, it goes for the Gazu instead. Gazu is taken out. War Drum Fire Trip enough to get the to get things going here. Mashuk goes for the uppercut. Slight overexertion to turn on Tireless? Yes, it does. But we can see that the Shook is slightly too slow. Through Tireless, it comes in. Last Rush has now been used, however, which means that Mashuk very likely to put itself in a position where it's going to be able to get enough going here. Platymus comes in. It sees that it's not under much threat. Lulatror maybe just kind of having to hope that he's got enough in the tank that this Ketza is going to be able to bring down the Shook. We could see a swap, but there are no comfortable swaps for Lulu. Getting this Platymus bigger and bigger. He can't really afford to have Naga on the board against Mashuk. Maybe has to commit the cap wire here into hitting this Shook. It's going to be tough. He wants to dodge the first aid kit if he can. Move flank. Goring. Drops Mashuk low. That's 40%. That might be enough. Cap wire. Synergy Ketza is triggered up. Here it comes. And the Mashuk is taken down. Invincible, despite the turbos, not fast enough. Cap wire doing serious work for Lulu Troy here. It goes for the Rotten Goo, and Capire will be taken out. Trying to cover the swap there. Unnoticed, giving a little more speed here, and all of a sudden... Nogais can turn off the Pryo on the Aquatic Whirlwind. That's what, If that's what Lulu wants. But if not, he's got the Golzi. He can work with the Golzi here. How deep are we at? It's game three, currently ace. Naga hits the board. Two wire coming out from Invincible, so immediately Chipe Tart turned off. Oh, but we do see that... Oh no, the Naga's fake beard goes first, so it won't be the one to activate. Invincible under immediate threat here, though. If the Naga outspeeds Platymus, the natural base speeds of these Thames are coming into play a little bit here. But Platymus has to be a little bit careful. Lulu does have, just have, like, base jump lined up on it. No swap outs come out. Platymus gets chunked by the base jump. Platymus, Rotten Goo gets outsped, going for the move flank here. Naga throws the beta burst. It's going to hit the plat. Oh, it's solid damage. Lulu would know whether or not that's enough to bring it down. Synergy Faraday Cage ticking down the Naga. There's still this bulked up Golzi in the back. How is Invincible going to be handling that? And he's not going to even try. So we see the Concede comes out. Lulu. On a roll. He's going to go ahead and take game number one. And we'll see how far that roll takes him into this game.
Oh, <laughs> with the Invincibi in chat. All right, uh, I'm going to go to the bathroom and be back in a sec. Okay, Canood versus Lulu. So we're going to see two teams we've already seen before. We'll get right into the draft. Canood going to be doing the inviting here. Lulu team looks troll at first sight, but it's tricky to play against. I do not think this team looks troll at all. I think a lot of the Thames on this team that are pretty good have already been kind of recognized as pretty good. Karn more of a support. I think Lulu's kind of hit on the primary benefit of the change from Korn, from a physical attacker to a special attacker, is that now it can use Sledge Gift, which is obviously... Uh, gives it some competitive application. Didn't really completely change how the tempo's played, but... It's nice in layers, too. And then obviously Capire is just probably better than everyone thinks, right? It's just... It, it is a really nice natural base speed tier. Um, Canood, however, does have... A lot more things that resist fire to work with and, and a couple more things that actually outspeed the cap iron and can control its speed a little bit more right Ociara, obviously a big problem because it is faster than cap iron and of course um we're gonna see gazu mishuk this is another case of receptive gazu i believe by the way being played for its typing Interesting. Polaroid picked up seconds. We do see double wind into Mushuk. A bit of an interesting opener here for Lulu, knowing that was available. We will see the OCR band out second. Golzi being taken out as well. So Volpi coming in. Capire, Mooflank should, oh, I think, almost immediately follow here. Yes, it does. Kinu picked up last. All right, here we go. Lulutor going up against Kanud. Two 
two big birds up in front of the Mushroom Man. Let's see if Lulu can get this to go. Mashuk with the Marbles chip. Kazu going to drop the morale boosting whip on it. Not exactly the most ideal board state for Shook. It is staring down double wind, but Canute actually immediately pivots out into Volpe, maybe wanting to get that resist on the Tesla prison coming out here. Lulu going to go ahead and swap out the Mishuk as well. Kinu coming in. Nice little protector bonus onto Gazu here, so Gazu being built up a little bit. Oh, we will see the Tesla prison. Yeah, both he's not going to take very much damage from that. It will, however, drop the speed. On the other side, no clean swap into Feather Gatling, so Kinu going to take a bunch from that. And now... A board state where neither side really does much violence into one another. But an early HP lead for Anud. Early speed lead for Lulutor. We do see that buff on Gazuma. Attempt, of course, walled out by the Amphater. Lulu is going to have to have, find, figure out a way to get through Amphater Volfi uh, to have a shot at this. We see early on, here comes the Gazu going for the early turbo, not the synergy one, and this is to get Kinu maybe above the Turok. Resin Trap going to hit it here. Of course, the bait triggered up. Well, he goes for that synergy quicksand, sort of counteracted a little bit by the turbo. Feather Gatling back into the Kinu. That does set up a potential turbine kill here, unless Luthu's got the extra edge and speed here. We see Quicksand right away nullifying that potential speed advantage. And we do see that speed advantage. Turbine comes out. Smacks down the Kinu. Lulu drops down a Temerly on. On the other side, Gazuma is going to go ahead and test the prison the Turok. Working that speed control. On the other side, Volpi is going to slam a Dust Vortex. This is plus one speed F Gazu. Yeah, it takes under 30 from that. Kinu gone. Hopefully it's done its job as far as Lulutroar is concerned. Stamina started to become an issue for Gazu as it's morale boosting wit but locked on the board. Mashuk comes back in. We see Volky and Turok are both minus speed now, which does kind of set Mashuk up a little bit here. Perhaps a turbo choreography into something from the Shook. Knud is going to get out. Tolkien coming in. And here is the heater with the lunch. That's an interesting call, actually, from Knud to throw the lunch into the Mushuk. If the Mushuk is tireless, it's actually going to really benefit from this. Gazu does go for Turbo. This does look like it will overexert it, though. Yeah, there's the overexertion. Mushuk throws the uppercut, and then Tolkien is going to resist that fairly easily. And the Quicksand, again, counteracting the effect of the Turbo. Well, he just sitting there shutting down the Gazuma's attempts to change the speed order of this game, and another timely lunch heater swap from the back. Great pivoting plays here. And the handcuffs onto the lunch. I think Talon is the player I've seen do that the most. Maybe he made that call. But it traps the Mashukian in front of Tornado. Tornado Dust Vortex should be plenty to strike down this Mashuk here. We do see Tolkien Tornado very cleanly clicked. 
Can Mishook live a DV from 38? It's going to be able to go first with Wastewater, actually. Slate Overexertion. Ah, that means it's so primed to go down to DV here. And no, it doesn't. It hangs on. A bit of a confounding turn for uh, Canute here is getting a little bit low stamina on the Volfi. Tireless Mashuk is in the game. And if the Tolkien drops low, if Tolkien drops low, we see Tolkien and Turok have both dropped pretty low, and Gazuma is able to threaten them. If that pattern continues, we see Volfi's going to have to overexert here. If that pattern continues, we could see Cap Iron Move Link start to really give Canute uh, trouble. Obviously, a Primo move should be able to finish off Mashuk. The gods who can claim a revenge kill if needed. Canute goes for, like, Fiery Soul Quicksand and just overexerts on the Volfi to Quicksand. Get the Gazu speed down low enough where its turbo is going to come too late in the game here. Nope, oh, Volfi's going to pivot out. Get the Bright Beam up for Amph. Bright being low-key, a really good way to stop unnoticed from working on Mooflank, too. Fiery Soul onto Mishook. Down it goes. Lulu. Goes for the Tesla, and it hits Amp. Targeting Volpi instead. It's running Amp instead of Volpi. Lulu the Jord goes for Capfire. Amp gets the Sweat Band going. It is a bit low on stamina now, though. But all of Knut's tens are... kind of low. Hold on a second here. Are we about to see another Capire sweep? The Capire has to eat Tornado. And Knut can use Tesla Prison. So I, I, think, I don't think so. I think the Tesla Prison is going to equalize things here. But we'll see. Capire is one of those times where not a lot of players at the top level currently have a ton of data on playing against it. So how strong is this thing? Last rush. Cap is faster than Fader right now. So no Tesla. Yeah, I don't know if... Will Amph go down to a single last rush? Ketza? Movement comes in. Oh, and they're going to go for it. Last Rush Ketza slams into the amp and takes it down. Canute maybe caught a bit off guard there. Last Rush Ketza, big damage. And that means, oh, if Canute went for Tornado, they fire Tornado instead. So that is going to be no unnoticed for Lulu. But that's a pretty steady overexertion. And all of a sudden, Lulu's got the board set up. Hang on just a moment here. Canute brings in Bolaren, but this thing has no prio. Hang on just a minute. The Bolaren has no prio. Oh, it it can get it can get prio onto Tornado. This turn, Canute swaps out Tolkien. Both be coming in just to dodge the best heal charge. Smart. Capfire goes for another synergy Ketza. Oh my goodness, Volaren gets smoked. 
Does he follow with Goring? There's the Goring follow-up. This Volarend is just down. Hang on a second. Unnotice is triggered up, and the bots don't have a way to deal with Capire. Token comes in. This lunch is going to work on the stamina. Is it stamina going to be? Yes, now they should have enough stamina control. There's a DV available. But everything is slow on Canute's side now. Once the Tolkien goes down, Mooflank is going to be the fastest him on the board next turn. Mooflank. More Pryo. Double Kick comes out. It's got the War Drum. Capire throws a Meteorite. This is not going to get Last Rush. But it still takes down the Volfi. Capire just picks up three quick kills. Windburst. Gonna go ahead and take care of... Try to take care of that unnoticed, so it won't proc. Capire's overexerted now. But Lulu should have Goring up now. At plus one speed, that Goring will definitely finish off... Tolkien. No, he's gonna go for Turok instead! Oh, but Lulu, he misses! Oh, the Tolkien was free! Tolkien rests. Gazi with the morale boosting whip. Does Capire? Capire has no Pryo. Tolkien can get the outsweet. Oh, but Lulu can still win, of course. He should have enough. Still. Hitting that Turok puts it in range of Gazu to take care of it with a Tesla prison here. Now he's going to go ahead and tornado. He's going to commit it. Knows that Tesla should clean up Tolkien. And the bots aren't going to have any way to take down this Tolkien. They can try and go for a fire nato. But the Gazu, it's plus one special defense that Kinu early on in the game, making all the difference. The Gazu, just tanky enough, it's going to survive. And that's enough. Lulu Troar on the back of Capire, absolutely slamming. Ties up the series. Here we go. Lulu on a bit of a run here. Going to go ahead and go two and two. Things are evened up. Now we haven't seen the teams for the next two players for bots. As well as the last player from East Coast. So a small, well actually I say a fairly sizable informational advantage for the bots. But after dropping in an O2 hole early on, East Coast Esports roaring back. Tie the game. It's going to be two new players. We're going to see Argon, the heavy hitter for Bots United. Well, they're all really heavy hitters, to be honest. Argon versus Zarbamba, who normally is the last player revealed or East Coast 2. So no path farm this time. Kind of 
kind of an interesting team from Zarbamba. We'll get to it kind of when it appears. <laughs> Both players playing Drill. Uh, <laughs> Argon going for Drill Lawali. Zarbamba going for Drill uh, on Garander. I was just played Mutlu this morning. The Catfire Mooflink combo is disgusting damage-wise. It's very good. You can tell... Like... You... I don't... I, I guess you can't exactly tell, but... You can see, like... It probably wasn't correct to leave... Amp in there, right? But either... Oh, we can live it. Or, oh, we can... Outspeed it was probably called. I don't know. I'm not on the comms. It's going to be an interesting uh, end game there. So, Argon with one of the few good looking Umbras in the game with the Oceara. Garander band down. Makes sense, it's one bulky ban away from being a bit of a problem for Argon to deal with. Okay. Bulky band out, and we're going to get our first square off here. Gazu. First picked up. The mirror match. Uh, two receptive Gazuma players in the finals of the league. Golzi Hazrat is the follow up from Zarbamba. Perhaps. Uh, not the biggest fan of going up against a Gazi, so bringing in two Thames that can pressure it with heavy physical damage. Of course, turn two, not so favorable for Hazrat. Argon goes with his own Hazrat, so now there's all kinds of setup potential. We do know that Gazu likes to click the speed control moves. And the third Nogais. Interesting how this Tem creeping sort of back into the collective mindset here, at least of East Coast 2. Three of the four teams running the Naga. Tolkien is going to be the ban. This uh, sort of optimizes things for Lawali and Platymus a little bit. In particular, Platymus looks like it's set to have a pretty strong game if the leads can be weakened here. So, we'll, Argon will likely look to take that ban. East Coast 2, of course, likely wishing they had brought their CEO to this one. As we can see, three straight teams, no mentals. And, uh... East just kind of chilling over here with a quad neutral team. Unfortunate. Scouting error from the uh, East Coast 2 department. The Wally coming out. And Platinum is going to be picked up. So Argon may be content to go Platy v Platy. The Owler hits the board for Bomba as well as Platymus. Argon coming back with Gyalus. I wonder I wonder how powerful Yowler is in this game. You know, we do see Um Oh yeah, Tolkien be the last pickup. Yeah, we do see Tolkien come in here. This is gonna be a very interesting game for Yowler, as there's not that much in terms of like Bulk on Argon's team, so the Yowler may be able to outtrade simply through its longevity. 
But we'll see what happens here. Diabolo's activated. A very, very interesting first turn. Here is, you know, both ha both Hazrats can go for Heat Up. Golzi can go for Shell Off. Gazu can start to control speed with Tesla Prison. Can Sarbamba or Argon maybe out outthink one another on turn one here? Here we go. Take a look at the Hazrats here. It is a double screen Hazrat for Sarbamba, and a double screen Hazrat for Argon as well, actually. Both Hazrats pretty good at protecting one another from damage from the Golzi and Gazu. So the board state overall probably favoring Argon at the moment. Diffuser not really that useful. Fat Rat could be two Fat Rats. It's hard to say. This is a very difficult turn, for what it's worth, in my opinion. Yeah, so Bomb is going to retreat Golzi. Platinum is coming in on that side. Hazrat stays in. Everybody stays in. Hazrat goes for the Wastewater. Gets a pretty good chunk of the Gazuma. Wastewater back the other way. Platinum won't be poisoned. And the Tesla Prison is going to hit Hazrat. But now, down drops it. And I wonder if the, if the bots can make the call here. I mean, you can see the PDX flag behind Sarbamba. PDX players typically do not favor a ton of special attack damage on Platymus. Maybe banking on Gazma leaving the game there. So if it's not a very high special attack platy, it seems likely that the Gazu will live a whirlwind. Definitely live to tell the tale on the whirlwind. And as the Hazrat gets a little bit lower, things get a little bit easier for Gaiala Slowali. On the other side of things, that Tesla did so much. Does Tesla Tornado simply just KO the Hazrat. Ah, uh, it seems unlikely. Hazrat's going to leave. It's Platymus coming in just to save up the... to get that. Like that. Aquatic Whirlwind. That's not very much damage into Gazma. Gazma goes for Tornado the other way to try and get this Platymus off the board, but it's got that high SP def. It just hangs on. 0.5%. Lava Wave with the Synergy is going to hit the Gazma here. Argon's Gazma will not survive. So down it goes. With Whirlwind committed. And only one Electric in the back, so Synergy Rotten Goo might have to wait. Could we see a Mirror Match board here? I like that little bit of speed control onto Hazrat. It means that Toxin Shower starts to get a little bit more powerful, so this is really nice for Argon. He can start working in... You know, Platymus going for... Toxin Shower here, and the Hazrat going for Heat Up. Looks very, very powerful. No Drill User available for uh, Argon here. Who's got the faster Platy? That's actually a pretty good question. But the Hazrat can, of course, just take down that Platymus. It's got Prio Attacks available. So unless, Hazard, unless Platymus can manage its own prio here, it's going to be a little bit tricky. We could also see a swap out. Hazrat's going to swap out for Sir Bomba. Yowler on this side. Hazrat, yeah, gets a quick Venomous Claws off. Platymus gets taken down. And Argon does go for the Toxin Shower. Yowler, no problem tanking that up, as it's likely got a nutrition bar. Oh, no, we don't see a nutrition bar. Oh, yeah, 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 it is nutrition bar. No, it's not nutrition bar. It is, is that a pen sunscreen? 
That's a pan sunscreen. What the? Bit awkward of Hazrat come out here. Does have the ability to, of course, take away the Platymus's cover here. But now Hazrat in a really good spot for Argon to click heat up. Is it really not that threatened? Hard to say. This is a weird Yowler game. Venomous Claw is going to go ahead and strip the Platy. We do see it is slightly faster on the rat. Double screen doing pretty tank. We see a pretty tanky rat there. On the other side, Yowler takes pretty strong chip. Savage Suplex back the other way. Platymus. Oh, it takes about half. Yowler, of course, has no way to... Uh, Get in another hit that hits that hard, though. So the Toxin Shower looking pretty safe. Maybe even just enough to get the Yowler out of there. No Nut Bar on this thing, but Pen Sunscreen instead. Just a very strange option being selected here. And as long as one of these attempts go down and the opening remains... Like, the Gyalis in the back is totally going to be able to handle this Golzi. Sarbamba saving Tolkien to do battle with Gyalis, Lawali, Hazrat, trying to get Platymus off the board. We'll see if Argon kind of puts it together and gets the Platymus out of here to be safe for later, or if he's simply content to just try and press the advantage that he has right now. Get the Platymus ahead. Players, one of the two players going deep into the reserve time. Difficult turn to think about here. And Argon does retreat, so Platymus will leave the game. The Lolly comes in. As right, Wastewater again onto Yaller. So Yaller not really able to do much else here. Hazrat, the Lava Wave calls out the Argon Swap. Oh, and Lawali gets smashed. Yowler, the clinch. It's going to trick our comebacker here, so this is pretty solid damage back into Hazrat. Yeah, Hazrat does drop low. That's within Wind Burst range for sure. Could it even be within Golzi range? Lawali just have that drill active, and we know it's got the outspeed, so it's a bit of a pincer situation here. It's got Gust. Oh, it's a bit of a tricky spot now. The Pryo Venomous Claws are available to outspeed hy the Hypoxia, but does, does Argon play Gust on Lawali? That is kind of what we're going to have to find out here. Gaialis comes in on this slot. Morale boosting whip. The Wally goes for Plague instead. Yowler gets taken down. Hazrat with the Venomous Claws will take down the Lawali. So Aquatic Whirlwind is still available. Tense moments here. It has to be Golzi coming out. But that Golzi has to be able to live. Argon goes for Platymus. On the other side, Sarbamba goes for Golzi. So now, it's time to read. It's time to get yourself in a nice novel, because we've got ourselves an incredible situation here. Hazrat does not go down to Aquatic Whirlwind, and that Aquatic Whirlwind has to be saved on Platymus. 
for the token. If Argon swaps to Hazrat and the Golzi goes down to the tick damage... Argon swaps. Hazrat comes in. Sarbamba swaps Hazrat in for Tolkien. Okay, Alice is resistant. It doesn't get burned. Their own damage is reduced. It wouldn't have been enough. Okay, Alice goes for C Bite. It does not get burned because of resistant, and it just takes down Golzi. Sarbamba immediately back for Hazrat. The coin emoji coming out. The 50-50. Argon with no reason to leave now. It says Hazrat is ill-equipped to handle Platymus in the late game. It would need to do 49.3. It would need to heat up to do that first, I would think. Argon chipping the Hazrat a little bit there. Fiery Soul hits the Gaelis. Hook Kick. Takes down Hazrat. That's going to be GG. We see the immediate damage onto Gaelis. Resistant, stopping it from working. Tolkien. The Fiery Soul brings down Gaelis. But there's no way Tolkien can outspeed Platymus here. This is obviously checked for it. And it's going to require an overexertion to Tornado as is. A little bit of bait. I mean, if Tolkien is somehow faster than Platymus, then East Coast 2 should win this game. But it absolutely should not be. Let's see what they click. Yeah, easy Aquatic Whirlwind coming out there. Platymus taken down, and East Coast is down to their last player. Lulutor will have to go 4-0 here. As Argon picks up another W. Championship, or division point, I guess. Championship point, you could call it. For Bots United. As we'll wait to see Lulu coming in. Here we go. Here we go. The last run of Cap... <laughs> Capire's gotta get it done. Will we see the fourth player for the bots, or are we just gonna see... Maybe Argon choosing to get choice of side here. By having what I assume is either Talon or Sock go... In the last spot. It is Sock versus Lulu, and Lulu will invite... So gonna have to take out Sok, who typically plays a slower, bulkier team. Talon is the coordinator. Shout out to your coordinators, making making the games happen. The CEOs.
Oh, holy smokes, there's... Too many Tims are the wrong color on Sox team, I gotta say. I guess Lou's got a few Lumas in there too, but... Sock, oh my goodness. Five Lumas and an Umbra. For Sock 1. At work at the moment? Is it is it Monday there? I don't know. All right, pick band phase. Here we go. Juvene, banned out. We're going to see Mishook as well. Taken down. Gazu is up. There are a lot of Thames that resist Capire here, but that hasn't really stopped Lulu in the past. I wonder if the plan... I wonder if the plan for Sock is to, like, test what Lulu can do if you second phase ban Capire. Sock also, I mean, this is worth pointing out. This is the one of the first players we've seen play Galios on not a, one of those dumb sleep block teams. Sorry, <laughs> this shouldn't be so mean to Bella. But, like, those, you know, sleep block wombo combo, this is so OP teams, which I'm pretty sure went 0-5 in the league. I'm adding all the instances of which they were used uh, correctly. It is going to be Nid. What if Lulu just first rounds, first faces Capire here? Yeah, we do see it. First face Capire coming out from Lulu. Challenging the Galios. Galios is. Fire is one of the two types that Galios resists, but it's not normally a Tem that can be played with high offensive tempo. It just doesn't have that much in terms of strong attacks. As a result. Lulu can look to sort of run away with things a little bit here. With a quick heat up into some pretty voracious attacks. Move flank banned out second, so Capire doesn't really have a running mate. A lot of times what Lulu will do is he'll use Karin as sort of the second uh, running mate with Capire, or even the Naga to invert Pryo so that Capire's natural speed can take effect. And Sock really just has more of a slower bulkier setup. But in paying that much attention to the uh, Capire and then going with the bans on sort of the more traditional aggressive threats, if you look at the draft, Sock has sort of left himself a bit open to Capire here. As uh, Sorry, not Capire, Corrin as he doesn't really have the tools in the back line to, to deal with a, like a fast Earth Temp. It's got to come from the Nid and maybe the Yowler. But now there's going to be a Mental coming in to sort of help solidify things for Lulu. He's deciding between Kinu and Naga. Protector has been huge for Lulu in this game. Like, It would not surprise me at all to see Lulu try to land a Protector on either Capire or Korin. In a lot of ways, Lulu's team reminds me sort of of how Funky Hat would play. But with... Uh, Capire or Karn instead of uh, the Lash. As we get into game number five here. Galio's triggering up Protostar. The Mom's Lunch going to be 
cancelled out. And the morale boosting whip. So now Lulu is just kind of net down some stamina. Would be pretty funny to watch Lulu just throw an embers onto Galios and well there goes the Doom threat, but I don't think the Doom is the threatening part of this matchup. The Galios, of course, with handcuffs is likely gonna be able to trap and destroy the Capire if uh if Lulu lets that occur. No gears really in surprising spots. Sock has first aid kit on the Yowler now instead of nutrition bar. E drink. No sleep. Oh, there's a Kinu on Lulu's team, so Garinder can block that. The bait. Not on the uh, Sock's team. Lulu maybe trying to decide whether or not to let the Capire get trapped and smacked, basically. No, everybody stays in. Capire. Big Quetzalino into Nidrasil. Tesla Prison. Into the Galios, that's actually quite a bit of damage, so this Galios, maybe not that specially bulky. It's going to go ahead and use Clay Ball, so there's no lunch, so Lulu will not be taken out by this. And a Toxic Ink, working that value. So now the Galios does have the option, it, its Protostar is weakened slightly. Uh, I can't imagine Lulu will go for a turbo choreography here. The Capire weakened, but it is it is kind of doing its job though. You can observe here the the nit is low, which is the primary obstacle for Corn. Like the nit being within KO range of probably Gazma Tornado or close to it is a bit alarming for Sock because. Garinder, Hazrat, Yowler, and they're not the best into dealing with Karn. And we see Karn come in. And it's going to go for a Mom's Lunch here. Nid retreats. Yowler coming in on this side. Quick transient echo from Sock. Capire tanks it, doesn't even go down. And the trap is actually going to clear the Toxic Tick. And the Capire throws the Embers, it's going to turn off the... Yeah, the Galios will no longer get Doom. That does mean, however, Lulutroar won't be able to get the Capire out of there. And Galios, we did see, has the outspeed with Transient Echo. So Galios will be able to pick up the KO on Capire, and the Nidrasil is still healthy. That plus Yowler being in the game and well positioned. You have to wonder, is Lulu gonna have it here? Galios likely needing to go for Transient Echo here to just get ahead of this Capire. It could also try and go and with that speed lowered from the clay ball. Good play from Sock. We said we see Selfless Ruination coming out. Yowler gets big boosts. Capire. Gonna go ahead and pop that. And there comes the Soil Steam. Solid damage into the Yowler, but. Not really quite enough as Yowler is going to go ahead and punch a hole in. Kinu comes in on that side. Corn gets buffed up. This is a nice Kinu board for Lulu. Galios Yowler doesn't really threaten it at all. 
and Corrin itself is relatively unfazed as well. But Sock is healthy enough on Galios that he really can just swap out here. Hazrat, uh, Nidrasil looking like pretty decent swap-ins. As Lulu is going to have a heck of a time trying to deal with a buffed up Yaller here if Hazrat or Nid can get a hold of this Kainu. Garander, of course, looking like a decent swap-in, but Sock has to watch out for a heavy hitting Soil Steam coming through here. We haven't seen if Galios. So Galios is Rumination, Clay Ball. And Transient Echo. We haven't seen if it is Dust Vortex or maybe a um, Energy Manipulation. Yeah, I like that. Emanip Trapping Card in play. Doesn't quite overexert. Working the stamina a little bit there. Kinu. Beta Burst. Oh, it's really not that much into the Yowler. Yowler. Oshi Dashi is going to smack the Karin. Big damage coming out there. Petrify back the other way. Howler gets trapped in. Nice play coming out there from Lulutroar. As Yowler won't be able to act, it won't be able to take its Hibernate turn, which means that it's going to have to stay in and sort of face the bombardment here, coming from Sock. But he's going to have to be careful, of course Lulu is, that he doesn't overexert here. From the Galios going for... No, the Galios is simply going to swap out instead. Nidrasil coming in. This is Mom's lunch to try and get that overexertion onto Lulu's Thames just to create a little bit of space. Beta Burst. Oh, big damage into the Yowler still. Just enough for First Aid Kick to activate. Karin rests. Yowler no longer trapped in. This Tim has freedom to leave if it wants. Nid in a good spot, but... Lulu can't really afford to let Yowler heal up. This Yowler, just, if it gets a little more bulky, it's just going to kind of be game over for Lulu, who already is playing behind the 8-ball in terms of, you know, Tem's HP and health remaining. New plan for Lulu. Gazuma coming in instead. Morale boosting whip, going to aid the Kinu stamina a little bit here. Kinu throws the Hypnosis back the other way onto the Nid. So... Lulutroar conceding the Hibernate to the Yowler. No! No Hibernate! Suplex coming in instead. Does the Yowler maybe not have a Hibernate? Kinu's Sweatband working really well with that Vigorize status from the Gazu. But Sock is slowly chipping away at Lulu's health. Not a lot of options, and look at the reserve time. Lulu and East Coast 2, they have maybe 30 to 40 seconds a turn to make a decision. And Sock can continue to sort of play out this line. Nidrasil. Out it goes. Galios coming in. Protostar triggered back up. Sock with the swap again. Garunder coming in on this side. Again, it's very hard to threaten Garunder with Lulu's current board state. The beta burst... Will come in, but yeah, Garander takes 17%. This thing is bulked up. Blizzard back the other way from Lulu. Very efficient. It will put Galios in a bit of a tough spot. E-Drink Garander means that there's no way it can really get much damage in play here. Kinu does have the option to try and go for Resin Trap, but Sock can, can simply pivot out again, should he wish. Maybe that's the plan, to try and get Karin a little more health back from Scavenger. Let Kinu get the Resin Trap damage into Galios. It 
eat, drink, drunk, Deja. It was in, yeah, we do see Karn come in, so if I can predict this, there's a good chance Sock can too. Does he make the pivot? It's important that he does. He doesn't. He goes for Emanip. This is going to trap the Kinu in. And that overexertion will lead to additional damage here. But Galios is taken down now. And with Galios taken down, that's mm, yummy for Karin. Kinu, big overexertion. Garander with a Noxious Bomb. Will that finish off the Kinu? It does. That's even more scavenger goodness. So we see the double trade come out there. And now, all of a sudden, there's a bit of a pin going on here. Does Sock have Winter Call available? I don't think so. Lulu maybe doesn't have enough. It, Yowler needs to get some healing going, though. Lulu goes for Golzi. Hazrat coming in the other way for Sock. He's got that adrenaline shot active. Does Lulu go for the setup? Hazrat looking a little bit spooky for Sock here as it's right in front of this soil steam. Garander available as well. Garander has a really hard time dealing damage. It's Noxious Bomb can hit Golzi though. Perhaps a double into the Golzi. Maybe enough to bring it down with the Wastewater Tick. But Lulu likely has a speed advantage. We'll go for a double here. We see Uppercut come out. It's into Garander. Oh, look how tanky that thing is. It eats the uppercut without much problems at all. Wastewater. Back into Golzi. Garander goes for the Noxious Bomb. This is a petrified turn again from Lulu. It's onto the rat. Okay. There it drops low. Lulu has to get the KO this time onto Garander. Or does he not go for it? He's got the Oshidashi. This Oshidashi, is it enough? Hazrat is locked in. It is going down this turn if Lulu so chooses. Uppercut, back into the Garander. Garander gets the fast P's electric blow off. Takes the Golzi down before it goes down. A little bit of chip onto the car. Is there Sandstorm here from Lulu? No, just a Soil Steam. It's onto Garander. Garander goes down. Very close finish here. Lulu goes for Gautam. Yowler coming in for Sock. That means Tornado tornado on the Hazrat side will be a KO, no matter what. Lulu has to be able to preserve Gazuma for this turn. Oh. The Karn has to be the one to KO the rat. Karn has to be the one to KO the rat. If the Gazuma KOs the rat, Lulu will take the damage. No, he's going to do it. He's going to give up the Gazu here. It's not farewell. Karn goes for Roar. Sock is not... He's playing Contagious Hazrat. Huh? Here's the mom's lunch turn. The tornado's been committed. Tesla. Tornado, we've seen so far. Does this thing have sparks? Does it have a second wind move? Like a hurricane, maybe. 
It needs it needs something to deal with the Nid. If Gazu goes down, it's so unlikely that Karn is going to have what it takes to finish off this board state. It's Blizzard. It's Blizzard and Turbo, that's right. Corn goes first with the Soil Steam. It's into the Nid. Gazu has to live or outspeed. Nid tanks the Gazu. It doesn't go down. Can it outspeed Yala with Blizzard? It does. Big pickup for Lulichor there. Orn. It's the Scavenger. Yowler will go for Savage Suplex. It's so low. It goes down. No Scavenger value there. This is a big Yowler. Lulu's going to have to rest this turn. Both players rest. Stock. If he's late torment, oh she he doesn't have any uh, he doesn't have any scaling moves. There's no hybridite and no winter call on this Yowler. If he's playing late torment with handcuffs Galios, Lulu willpower drains him. What a play! Karin drops a seventy eight. That's not enough. Yowler slight overexertion. Lulu is Soil Steam, Petrify, Roar, Willpower Train from the corn. Bro is cooking. So, so is whoever's outside. One sec. Lulu goes for the Petrify. Yowler can't take any actions this turn, so he'll rest. Both Gems will rest. Lulu probably trying to figure out whether or not Roar is better here. Another willpower drain, playing that stamina. Sock lets himself still move by going for clinch. No comebacker bonus from that. Petrify back again, slowly grinding down the yellow. And that should be enough where two soil steams finishes it. Soil Steam, it has to do over 11%. It absolutely does. No Sludge Gift. There goes Yowler. We've got ourselves a Game 7. Lulu Tror has got East Coast 2 on his back right now. The Capfire Corrin. Will it be enough to triumph over the bots, or will Argon put a stop to it? What a finals. Game 7. Let's see. It's, of course, going to be Argon versus Lulishor. Argon will get choice of side, so likely opting for the counter pick on blue. And it's just a question of whether or not each player can figure one another out here. Lulu going 3 0 so far, yep.
Just waiting for the announcement. Arden versus Lulatrar. All right, here we go. Who's ready for the finals? Here we go. Arden going up against Lulu. So this is the kind of team double water, not really the best for Capire or Karn. So we'll see if that changes things in the matchup at all slightly. On the other hand, there isn't as much like, if the OCR is fanned out, there isn't as much like raw speed and power on Arden's side. He kind of has to rely on um, getting the turbos off, really, or the speed control moves off. He does have a lot of them. With a natural, like, raw speed and power coming out from Capire. He'll know that the Karin doesn't have Sludge Gift now, which is relevant in this matchup. Makes it difficult for Karin to, like, outspeed. Um, but he does have Mom's Lunch and Willpower Drain. That classic way of controlling stamina. OCR of Vando. So we'll see one of the waters taken out. Argon does have counter pick though, so it's very easy to line up the Platinus into that first pick. Catfire would not be surprised to see Argon look to ban it in this second phase. Asma comes in. Right away, Lulu with the counter pick onto the Golzi. Not really a strong counter to Gazu in particular, just opting to go for it. Maybe looking at Golzi Capire opener here. Yep, Golzi Capire. Lulu goes immediately back. For the fiery goat. Yeah, and Argon does not want to give him anything there, so he's going to go for Hazrat here. Seeing a good Hazrat game sort of unfolding, especially if he does go for the ban on Karn in second phase. Just leave a base jump, I wonder. We saw Embers, we saw Heat Up. No, we've seen all of Karn's... We've seen all of Catfire's move. There's no base jump, so... No way to not be resisted by the rat. And... <clears throat> of course, the bots will have scouted this as well. The second water gets banned out. That almost necessitates that... Karn will be banned here. Although, it is feel rough to ban Karn with Bulfy, Lilali... And... Um... Yeah, I was still in the game, but I think it, it is just must be correct. No, it's... The running mate... Move flank taken out. That is a very interesting choice there. Does Lulu go back for Karin? The things that Karin brings to Lulu's team are outside of the type chart a little bit here. 
And also, it is a pretty solid swap in turn one. Because we know he is going to want to try and preserve Karin here. Or preserve Capire here. Given the rest of the back. So in that sense, the move like ban is smart, for sure. This last pick is kind of interesting, too. Lulu will know whether or not Argon is playing two or three birds before he decides whether or not to bring in Mashuk. Token comes in. We've got 20 seconds to make the other pick. Token seemed like the obvious pick because it checks both Kinu and Mushuk as well as being decent into the rest of the lineup. Oh, you see Volpi? Hey, it's going to be Volpi. Not a great Volpi game, but we shall see. All right, here's the finals. East Coast 2 versus Bots United. Argon versus Lulutror. Winner take all in Division 1. Cosmo with the Diabolo reveal. It is Fire Chip. Now you see in the back line, not the most fantastic game for the Capire. And the Volfi does present problems for Karin and Naga. So, honestly, the Tem that seems the most beneficial for Lulutror so far in this opener is the Golzi. I wonder if we see Lulu swap in the Kinu to support it, although that is kind of sus. The obvious swap here is, is Karn for Capire, but that does give Argon some leeway to respond. Capire will swap out. It is going to be Karn in on this side. Early Mom's Lunch. Golzi goes for Show Off. So Argon, of course, can punish this with a nice Tesla Wastewater here. Yeah, the Wastewater does impact the Golzi. No, but the Tesla Prison will hit Karn, so that's not irrelevant, as it is a pretty solid chip. It doesn't mean that Karn will have a really hard time outspeeding anything on Argon's team from now on. There is no great swap into Oshidashi, though. And Argon doesn't have any way of gaining speed control here. So he's going to have to get zonked by a plus two uh, Oshidashi on something. That is a crucial difference in bulk there. I wonder if we see him go... So Argon is going to get out on Hazrat. He's coming for Tolkien for the burn. This makes sense. The Oshi going to slam into the Gazma all the same. One of the easiest turbos Argon's ever clicked, probably. And Lulu goes for the attack split there. The burn is going to be impactful on Golzi. Not a very easy swap situation for Lulu Troy here. Does he want to keep the Golzi? Maybe to deal with the Volpi, but now it's definitely within Sludge Gift range. So, <clears throat> has to be a little bit careful. Nice turbo play from Argon, though, as they usually are. Very clean. Gets the token in. And gets it over top of the Golzi's Hasty Lunge. So he's likely going to have to go for a double here. Still, as Golzi could survive the Fiery Soul. And that's not a Hasty Lunge I think you want to take. Especially with Kinu. Although, I don't know if Argon minds that much to give up the token here in exchange for the Golzi. That's maybe a trait he's not that worried about making. No, he's going to secure it with Sparks. So there's the Sparks onto the token. At plus one, the Epsil connects. Golzi doesn't go down. That burn is consequential. 
Oh, but the plus two attack still rings through. Token drops low. And Lulu does throw away Petrify a little bit there. Probably would have preferred a Soil Steam. But Golzi survives. Adrenaline Shot is active. Whatever comes in here is going to have to... The Gazma is going to have to go ahead and throw Tornado here, which is kind of awkward. Yeah, Bulky comes in. This is nice to try and go for the trap play. Way to deal with Naga. Although, we could see a swap play come out here. Token down, that's one of the ways of dealing with the Capire. One of the things that is faster than it. Contagious Rat. Yeah, the Contagious Rat was a little weird. I will, I will give you that. There was a, a couple plays, too. Like, other things in that game that were a little bit strange, but... Let's focus on the finals now. So, Gazuma will have to commit a Tornado here to deal with... The Golzi. But Lulu could go for a swap play. No, Argon's going to swap out Gazuma here. Gael is coming in. Going for the Morale Whip. Lulu swaps out Golzi. It's Kinu. This is going to buff up the Karn, so maybe Lulu Troy just stays in here. He does, so Plague. That's not very much damage. It's not a two-hit KO. And on the other side... Oh, Karn goes for Roar! That's a big drop, both of attack and special attack. Onto Volfi and Gyalis. That might secure this plus one, plus one Karn another turn to operate. And nothing wants to take a Soil Steam back the other way. Argon might be able to do it, but they know he's resistant, not mirroring. With those two Thames kind of lowered in terms of their offensive impact. But these are the two Thames that Capire wants to be in against. So I wonder if we see Lulutrar maybe try to do that. Maybe wishing he had Petrify up at this point. Plague 36.2% going up against Hook Kick Gyalis here at minus one attack. Is it enough? Yes. Corn goes down. On the other side, Kinu is going to go ahead and throw Hypnosis onto the Volpi. Which, of course, makes total sense. But what do you know? Here comes Capire. Minus two special attack starts to really grind in here. Kinu's free to go... Lulu's free to go for Heat Up Turbo here, right? He will sustain quite a bit of damage on Kinu to do that. He does have the option to go for it if he wants. Because now, all of a sudden, Lulu is in position to yank back speed control here. Okay, that was side sharp steps. Gonna go ahead and wake up the Volfi. Catfire goes for heat up. Turbo choreography coming out. They're gonna speed up. Volfi does get off the dust vortex, but if it's a minus two special attack, Catfire is gonna hang on. But that is crucial damage. As it's gonna go ahead and slow things down. Not let Capire get an attack off here. It's now got to make sure that it gets an attack. It is targetable. It could go down to maybe a hit from Lulu here. But it's a smart play from Argon to build that big damage on the Capire. But 
But now, which way will Lulu go? And how does Lulu deal with Argon's Gazma? That Tessel prison looks so free into Naga at this point. Lulu retreats Capire. Golzi coming in. Kinu gets a quick beta burst. Into the Vulpy. Oh, very tanky. On the other side, Vulpy. Throw a Sludge Gift. Golzi goes down. Now, Hook Kick. Coming out. Maybe trying to cover a slot there. No Crystal Bite into the Kinu. Alpire makes its way back into the game. Now, last rush, heat up. Quetzalenyo is up. But we know... Oh, Argon committed hook kick. Quetzalenyo goes first. It hits the Volfi, down it goes. Argon used Hook Kick. Kinu goes back for the Turbo. He C bites the Kinu at minus one attack. It brings it down. Gaius overexerts. Mmm, Lulu's gonna run out of gas here. He doesn't have enough. Argon as Hazrat. Lulu goes for Naga. He needs to figure out a way to keep the Capire alive through this turn, but it doesn't look like he has any options to do so. No, the bots are looking very favored right now. So the hope for Lulu has to be that Last Rush heat up Meteor... Plus, Beta is enough to KO Hazrat. Meteor comes out. It's into the rat. Oh, that's a lot of damage! On the other side, does knock out speed. Naga is at speed. Can it deal 31 with Beta? It does. Hazrat goes down. Ticks on to both. Gazma comes in. DA is active, so no prio moves can be used here. Capire is the fastest time on the board. If Gaelis attacks, it overexerts. Capire's got at least one more shot, one more attack into the Gazu here. Because it Naga can never outspeed Gazu. So Lulu has to take the Gazu with Capire. This is so close. Hypnosis won't work on this guy else. We see Quetzalenyo. Gazu goes down. Capire overexerts. Naga does go for Hypnosis. Argon won't be able to attack. But it will still be able to get a hook kick off here. Oh, 
Oh, if they had gone for Embers, would Embers have KO'd? Now, guys, his Fury comes out. Oh, that's not enough for the Gaelis. Double Gash. Takes out. DA still active. This should be enough for a Crystal Bite here. Naga goes for Psy Surge. Sea Bite at minus one versus 80 HP Naga. It goes down. Bots just win in the end. GG's. What a finals. Oregon clutches it out in the end. Wow. What a, what a finals. Wow. Awesome stuff from both teams. Bots United takes it. 4-3 in a dramatic finish. Capire not quite enough. Lulu could not quite get everybody. Argon just enough. All right, GG's everybody. We're gonna end the stream there, I think. Is there anyone else uh, on stream right now that we know? No. So, come to the podium on Tamer's Paradise for the rewards. Okay, we'll do that off stream. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, I might be back a little bit later today with some lairs. I do have to sort of keep pace